I recently purchased a new miter saw, and it didn't take long for me to get a little disappointed in the lack of dust collection that was happening. As with most miter saws, they just tend to spray dust everywhere when you make a cut. This got me thinking, there has got to be something I can do to improve the situation. I flexed my brain and determined the only way to proceed would be to perform a completely unnecessary experiment and calculate the efficiency of three of the most common dust collection solutions. And then I'd make my own and see if I can make it even better. So put on your lab coats, cause it's time for science and wood shop. Actually, I was only ever good at lunch and recess. Anyways, we're first gonna start out by testing the standard sawdust bag that comes with the saw. I take a moment to empty and clean it out so that we can get a fair measurement of what it can catch. Which, in my experience, is just dirty looks, because these bags are usually a joke. To remain consistent between all the tests, I'll make five cuts out of the same piece of 2x4 lumber so that I generate the exact same amount of sawdust for each one. Already I can see that this is far from being the best solution. I gently take the bag off, gather up the dust that was still in the tube, Dump it out onto a sheet of paper. And set it aside for later. The next two tests will involve using a shop vac and a cyclone, so I start off by making sure the collection bucket is perfectly clean. Then putting the bucket back in place, I can remove the bag and connect the vacuum hose in its place. Now, this is probably the most common dust collection solution that people use. So, as long as I can beat the performance of this one, I'll consider myself an evil genius. I knock down any loose dust that's in the cyclone and then dump this one out onto another piece of paper. Now, I've seen some folks have luck with extending the stock dust boot by simply adding on some duct tape, and I figured I'd give that a shot as well. Once I had it looking pretty good, I went ahead and made the five cuts for the test. Well, it definitely caught more, that's for sure. And I could already tell that there was more dust in the bucket. Jotting down the name of my firstborn. Now I'm gonna go make my own contraption and see if I can make something that works even better. My thinking is that I could collect more if I had the mouth opening lower and closer to the source. Kinda like how I eat M&Ms. To do this, I cut down a piece of masonite board and held it up to the front of the fence. Then I just traced the profile so that I could cut an exact fit. With the profile drawn out, I could cut the front of the shroud to width and then head over to the bandsaw to cut out the rest. Now that it's fitting pretty snugly, I can measure out and cut some more pieces to be the sides. I strike a line on either side of the front piece and then lay down a bead of CA glue to attach the sides. Using a square, I can hold things at 90 degrees, and then I hit it with some activator to instantly make all my mistakes permanent. It fits in there pretty nicely now, but I'll need to make sure that it stays recessed from the front of the fence. And to do this, I simply glue on a tiny piece on the back that acts as a positive stop. Now the other side will get a similar piece, but this one has to be large enough so that the saw's integrated hold down clamp, which I never use anyways, can be used to secure the shroud into place. Cutting out that shape on the bandsaw. Smoothing out the curves on the belt sander. and gluing it into place. And in much the same way, I put on a back and a top. 
I mark just how big I want the front opening to be, and then I extend those lines down. Then using a jigsaw, I open up the front face of the shroud. Now I have to make a port for the vacuum. I scoured the scrap wood bin and chopped up a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood and then proceeded to get glue all over the surface of my table saw. Once the block was dry, I could punch a hole through it that was just the right size for my miter station's vacuum hose. I clean up the edges of the block and then cut it in half over at the bandsaw. I smooth out the face on the belt sander and then I trace the inside shape onto the side of the shroud. Next I use a Forstner bit to poke a hole in the center and then after several years of filing I was able to turn that circle into an oval. And once it looked good I just lined it up and glued it into place. Now it's time to give this thing a shot. I drop it into place, check for clearance, clamp it down, and attach the vacuum hose. I make the inaugural cut, and then I can go ahead and make my cuts for the experiment. Sure seems like it worked well, but let's compare it to the rest. Alright, so here are the dust piles from the four different solutions. I borrowed the scale from my neighbor's meth lab and dropped on the standard bag sawdust pile, 71 hundredths of an ounce. Next up, the most common solution of just a shop vac. 0.81. All right, that's a little bit better. Now the duct tape modified dust shoe. Yeah, it caught just a bit more. It's at 0.85. And now for my shroud. Even better still, 88 hundredths of an ounce. So what do these numbers even mean? Well, if we measure the kerf of the miter saw, we see that it's exactly one-tenth of an inch. So if we make five cuts at one-tenth of an inch, that means a half-inch piece of the same board would weigh the same as the sawdust generated from those five cuts. And this thing weighs 0.92. So the standard bag managed to capture 77% of the dust. That's pretty impressive, actually. Adding a vacuum helped dramatically, and it got another 11%. Extending the dust boot helped get 92%, but my dust shroud beat them all by capturing 96%. Now I know some of you are wondering, can you cut miters with that thing? And the answer is, you wouldn't want to. You'd pretty much destroy it. But the overwhelming majority of cuts I do with the miter saw are straight 90 degree chops. So for that, this is perfect. And for the miters and bevels, I'll simply set the shroud off to the side and revert back to the extended dust boot solution, which was still 92% effective. I'm pretty stoked at how well this worked. Every miter saw is just a bit different, so if you wanted to make this for your saw, you'll have to piece it together on the fly as I did. There really isn't one set of plans that will work for all of them. But overall, this has been a pretty awesome upgrade to my saw. An 8% increase in dust collection effectiveness might not seem like a lot, but it sure adds up the more cuts that you make. Hey, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Uh, again, forgot to tension the blade. Oh, darn it. Idiot. I'm doing a movie about dust collection, and I forget to turn the vacuum on. Moron. I think I just glued it to the saw.
Oh, you idiot. Oh, you did. Stupid. There we go. 